Okay, today's final lecture of the course will focus on two things. First, we're going to look at how we can use the boundary layer quantities that we've learned about to identify and predict flow separation. And then later, we'll recap what we've learned about boundary layers and their effect on the external inviscid flow and look at the coupling between the two briefly. So oh, earlier we've alluded to the fact that the shape parameter, which is H, delta star over theta, governs flow separation. Well, the details of exactly how uh, that occurs are beyond the scope of this course. It can be shown that for self-similar boundary layers that are laminar, H greater than 4.0 will result in separation. Now that result only holds for these self-similar laminar boundary layers doesn't change a lot for turbulent boundary layers, where H of about 3 defines the limit of separation, so that values larger than 3 will typically have separated flow. This is going to be illustrated using examples taken from X-foil. Visually examining the displacement thickness and pressure coefficient or edge velocity distributions over an airflow can produce some insight into flow separation, but the approach isn't very accurate. A better approach is to look directly at the two critical boundary layer parameters, which are the shape parameter H and the skin friction coefficient CF, which is just the wall shear stress over one half. Rho e squared, and we'll use those to identify separation. We'll also look at the dissipation coefficient, CD, to see what that can tell us in addition to the skin friction coefficient. What we'll look at is the NACA 008, 0008 airfoil. So this is a symmetric airfoil at 0 degree angle of attack and 5 degrees. And we'll do it for two Reynolds numbers, 1 times 10 to the 4, which is a low Reynolds number, and 1 times 10 to the 7. 1,000 times larger, which is a high Reynolds number. This 1 times 10 to the 7 Reynolds number is more representative of a wing on a real aircraft, and 1 times 10 to the 4 is uh, representative of a, a small radio-controlled aircraft or a small drone. So first, let's consider the low Reynolds number case at zero angle of attack. For each of these, I'm going to provide values that were come from X-foil that, but that aren't shown on these plots, which are the drag coefficients, fo coefficients from skin friction and pressure drag. And what's important is to look at the relative contribution. So here, 25.5% of the total drag is pressure drag. This is for a zero angle of attack case. So this is fairly high um, for, for such a, a low angle of attack, but it's due to the low Reynolds number. And we see that the boundary layers are quite thick here at the trailing edge, but it's quite, it's very difficult to tell if there's separation or not. 
So looking at the shape parameter for this case, first we should know where the turbulence transition locations are on both upper and lower surface. Of course, the flow is symmetric here. Um, the turbulence transition location is one, which means that the flow over the entire surface of the airfoil is laminar and doesn't become turbulent until the wake happens. So because we're in a laminar flow region everywhere, the critical value of the shape parameter is four. And we see that the shape parameter is below that everywhere, which tells us that the flow is attached. Now at the trailing edge, it's starting to get close. It's about 3.5. So we're already getting close to separation limit, um, even at zero degrees angle of attack here due to the very low Reynolds number. Now, if we look at the skin friction coefficient for this case, it's very smooth, and this tells us that there's no turbulence transition, uh, which would involve an increase in local skin friction, as well as no separation, because nowhere is it zero until there's no more wall in the wake. The dissipation coefficient follows the same trend as uh, the skin friction coefficient, but never goes to zero at the trailing edge due to the contribution from the mass defect or pressure drag. So now we have the same Reynolds number, but at an angle of attack of five degrees. And now the skin friction drag coefficient is 0 0.02010 and the pressure drag coefficient is 0 0.02654, which shows us that 56.9% of the drag is pressure drag. So this is very high, and immediately it's apparent why, because we have something that looks very much like a separation back here. To see for sure, let's look at the shape parameter, And indeed, when we look at this, we see that the shape parameter becomes very large. Note that the transition locations are still at the trailing edge, so the flow is still laminar. But here, the H parameter exceeds 4, and so somewhere right around this region, separation happens, and the flow never reattaches. H doesn't drop back, drop back down below 4. Now we can confirm exactly what's going on here by looking at the skin friction coefficient. And what we see is that the skin friction coefficient goes to zero at approximately exactly, uh, approximately the same place, uh, that H became larger than four. Note that in this region, the skin friction coefficient is actually negative. And this is due to reverse flow in the boundary layer. And as we discussed last time, uh, the using the skin friction and mass defect approach can give local negative contributions to the overall drag, um, which is why the dissipation coefficient is a, a more useful parameter. So looking at that, we see that, of course, the dissipation coefficient is everywhere positive. Um, but once we hit the region where the flow is separated from about x over c of 0.3 onwards, all of this dissipation is coming essentially from pressure drag rather than from skin friction. So now let's consider the high Reynolds number case starting at zero angle of attack. So the skin friction drag in this case is 0 0.00434 and the pressure drag coefficient is 0 0.00040. So what this says is only 8.4% of the drag is pressure drag. And this is much reduced compared to the other zero angle of attack case because of the much higher Reynolds number and therefore the thinner boundary layers. One thing to note here is that the total drag coefficient is 
almost 10 times lower than for the low Reynolds number case. Again, this is because of the thinner boundary layers, uh, which have significantly reduced uh, the pressure drag. as well as the skin friction. So looking at the shape parameter, we first note that we now have turbulent flow on the airflow. The transition locations are about a third of the way down the airflow, and we can clearly see those here where there's a transition and the shape parameter decreases here since the turbulent boundary layer is more full closer to the wall and thus more resistant to separation as we've discussed in class. Looking at the skin friction coefficient, we see that the transition to turbulence dramatically increases the skin friction, um, which is what we expect because of the larger velocity gradients near the wall. The transition effects show up in the dissipation coefficient as well, um, and here these curves look very similar overall due to the very low pressure drag. For the final configuration that we're looking at, the high Reynolds number with the angle of attack of 5 degrees, again, first let's note that the overall drag coefficient is reduced by nearly 10 times uh, compared to the 5 degree angle of attack case uh, at the low Reynolds number. And here we have that the skin friction drag coefficient is 0 0.00400 and that the pressure drag coefficient is 0 0.00165 which tells us that about 29.2% of the total drag is pressure drag. This is a, a reduction of nearly 50% of the fraction of drag that was pressure drag at the 5 degree angle of attack compared to the low Reynolds number case. The reason why is readily apparent when we look at the flow over the airflow and we see that the flow is well attached everywhere. This was separated in this region at the low Reynolds number. So. Here now we see that on the suction side, or the upper surface of the airfoil, the flow transitions to turbulence almost immediately. But we can see that the shape parameter actually shoots a little bit above 4 here, and so any, any later separation would actually result, or any later transition would actually have resulted in separation. And in fact, um, what we'll see is that the separation itself is going to be inducing the, the transition to turbulence. After that, H remains very low um, due to the turbulent momentum transport into the boundary layer. For the skin friction, we do get the skin friction dropping down to zero and actually slightly below at the transition point, which shows us that there is a very, very small laminar separation here, which ultimately drives the transition to turbulence. So the flow reattaches after the transition due to the resilience of that uh, full boundary layer profile to separation. And finally, if we look at the, display, or the dissipation coefficient, um, we see that, again, there's a relatively low pressure drag here, which means that the dissipation coefficient is essentially tracking the friction, uh, skin friction coefficient along the suction side of the airfoil. Now, if you were to perform this analysis again at Reynolds number of 1 times 10 to the 7, um, at, say, alpha of 20 degrees, you would see turbulent separation at H of about 3, uh, and I encourage you to run this in X-foil for yourself to see that. So from this overall analysis, we can conclude the following. Increasing the Reynolds number really increases the resistance to separation.
And the mechanism for this is by is because it causes the transition to turbulence. We also see that H less than 4 implies that the flow is attached if it's laminar. And H less than 3 implies that the flow is attached if it's turbulent. We also saw that the skin friction being 0 will happen at separation locations. And we saw that pressure drag as a fraction of total drag can be high even for fully attached flow at low Reynolds numbers due to thick boundary layers. And finally, we saw that the dissipation coefficient is always positive even when the skin friction coefficient is zero or slightly negative because delta star is always growing and viscous dissipation is always occurring.